What's up, everybody? It's Vicious of uh, the Immersive Arcade channel, and I've decided to go over this video by Ann, that's A N 1337. Um, I said I'd make a video on this, and that person actually loved it, so I'm gonna go ahead and do it. DSP spends 39 minutes preparing his viewers to hate Returnal. Cope pre stream 42921. So obviously this is old, but I really wanted to go over it because as you know, I made a review of Returnal. Well, you probably don't know that, but I make reviews on this channel. I'm not the best at doing it, but I'm trying. And I want to see, I want you guys to see what DSP says and maybe check out my review and, you know, get an idea of what you want to think about Returnal because DSP has a warped view on things. But without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, guys, I'm back. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's get to what everyone wants to talk about. Let's get to the subject at hand, the big news today. Returnal comes out tomorrow. It is a PlayStation 5 exclusive. It is only the second ever PlayStation 5 exclusive. The only other one was Demon Souls, okay? Um, the reviews are out. The review embargo's over. <clears throat> and ladies and gentlemen, I hate to say it, but it appears we have a situation, which is one of those cases where... The review scores make no sense, because if you actually read the reviews, they give you a ton of detailed information about this game that make, may make you like or not like it, yet every review says the game is good when it comes to the review score, alright? So, I no lie, I saw reviews. I saw reviews that were as thus. Here okay, we ready? go. Here's what the review said. I'm not even kidding. Not, I'm, just, I'm paraphrasing, but essentially the review says, Returnal is repetitive. There's a gameplay loop that's good for the first few hours and then gets boring and repetitive because it's procedurally generated rather than handcrafted. The game does not have the ability to save. You have to beat entire stages in one go, which means if you die, you waste entire hours of gameplay, which is incredibly frustrating. The game mm -hmm. itself is a roguelike, which works for an indie game, but for a major AAA studio release charging $70, it kind of doesn't live up to expectations of what you would want out of a triple-a studio release especially being only the second playstation 5 exclusive ever game i don't think that's true by the way i think that destruction all-stars is the second playstation exclusive technically but whatever so yeah i don't think that a roguelike game not allowing you to suspend um your state like people are complaining about is like the most terrible thing uh especially when it comes to returnal I think Returnal is pretty tame in most aspects of its uh, roguelike features. And yeah, there's a lot of negative things that you could say about Returnal, but there's a lot of negative things I could say about quite a few games. And I still have resounding positivity about the game, period. And DSP, DSP cannot compartmentalize and he cannot use his brain to figure out that there are negative things But there are also things that are positive that are good. This is like sort of part of his mental illness You know, he can't figure out that you can have negative things going on and still like have Very positive a very positive outlook period. He doesn't understand that shit. That's why he won't come clean about his fucking WWE super card shit throwing him into bankruptcy or whatever. But he'll, he'll explain more about why he's, you know, upset about these reviews. Really, I think it's out of jealousy. I think DSP wants to be an influencer and he never will be again. So, yeah, that, that's my take on that. But the graphics are amazing. The gameplay itself is outstanding. Nine out of ten. What? What? Wait a Idiot. minute. Your review. Literally, your review just said. Repetitive, grindy, no saving leading to frustrations like, like crazy, and you wish that the levels were handcrafted rather than procedurally generated. Nine out of ten. You just gave four game-destroying criticisms. Nine out of ten. You know, I don't need to point out the irony that DSP has been playing Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, the console version that, you know, nobody likes uh, for more than 20 years at this point. And he still plays that shit a lot, like every to every other weekend. Like, that's the only game he really enjoys playing, even though he loses a lot and is not as good as he used to be. Or if not that, just was never really that good in the first place. 
He's been playing the same game for like 20 years, and that game is the pinnacle of achievement to him. And it's only that way because he has nostalgia for his uh, placing at Evo. But, you know, him saying something repetitive, that uh, you gotta trust him. These characters have like fucking six buttons that they use. They probably all have like one command uh, normal. And they have like three specials apiece. But yeah, th that that game is it's, it's great. It's classic. Returnal, repetitiveness, nah, don't like it. Uh, and the handcrafted thing is weird to me. You know, there are pros and cons to having procedurally generated um, gameplay, right? Um, and he's going to make this fucking comparison later, but I'm going to go ahead and do it anyway. So in Bloodborne, there's procedurally generated uh, Chalice Dungeons. And they are boring because most of them are the same depending on which type of Chalice Dungeon you enter. There's not a lot of uh, scenery or set pieces that are really interesting in them. That's what makes them boring, you know. Returnal, I don't feel is the same. Um, Bloodborne has the con portion of procedurally generated, whereas um, Returnal has a pro. Returnal has areas that you're like, man, I hope I find this area next because it doesn't have an infinite amount of areas. It's not the computer isn't generating shit on its own. You understand? There's like a finite amount of rooms. It's like probably like, let's say 70 rooms. And hell, let's even say it's like 25 rooms per biome. You might memorize 10 of them. And you might be like, man, I hope that this one is here next time. You know, but they switch it up to a point where it's like, you never, you never know if you're going to run into it or not. And it's not really boring because the game looks good. It gives you good scenery, good set pieces. It's pretty decent in that regard. So those are the pros and cons to procedurally generated um, levels to me. And he just doesn't understand. It. He's played roguelike games before. I don't know why he doesn't understand this, but yeah, well, let's continue. And I'm not kidding you. Like, if you go look at those fucking reviews, that's what they're all like. They're all saying, yeah, the game is definitely not, like, like perfect. It has a lot of flaws. The game has this wrong with it, this wrong with it, this wrong with it. Nine out of ten. What the fuck are you talking about? That's not how you review a game. You don't say the game has a ton wrong with it. Nine out of ten. That's not how it's done. Uh, you can't tell people how to review games. And the thing is, it's not really their fault. I want to say, uh, I haven't seen the reviews, but you're supposed to be able to compartmentalize and figure that shit out yourself or watch another review. So he's saying that a lot of reviews are saying this. It's annoying to me that he's saying that because he won't just fucking just play the game, right? <laughs> you know, he's he gets paid to play these video games and be bad at them and to not hardly do any commentary at all. But he's sitting here trying to tell you, the viewer, that these guys are bad at their job. It's ridiculous. That's called irresponsible journalism. And yep. I'm tired of it. There he goes. I really am because the reviews are good. If you actually read... Look at DSP's reviews, by the way. See if you can find some of his reviews. And actually watch him play those games and hear how he talks about them. He thinks Metal Gear Solid 2 sucks. He thinks Final Fantasy 7 sucks. He thinks The Last of Us 2 is too political. He thinks Life is Strange 2 is too political. Um, which is... Like, if politics to him are, like, you know, a character being gay or having sex with another character, that game is automatically bad and contrived from the get-go. It's doomed in DSP's eyes. So, I just got I, I want to, like, prepare you guys for that. DSP is a fucking blockhead. The reviews, reading the meat of the reviews. The reviews the meat? themselves are good. They have exposed the game's flaws so that you will actually know what the game is when you're dropping 70 bucks for it. And I'm happy that they did that, and I'm happy that the reviews were honest. I'm not happy that the number of the fucking scores are all incorrectly, stupidly not scaled. That pisses me off. Again, DSP has been gaming for, what, 30 or 40-something years, right? That pisses him off. He can't understand... I think if you've been gaming for a certain amount of time, you should have a feeling just by watching some gameplay if a game's going to be good or not. You know? Like, I watched Returnal's gameplay, and I was like, this seems like a game I could sink my teeth into. And I could. I gave it an 
Um, do I have some regrets about the review? Yeah. Uh, if I could add some to the review, I'd probably say, mm, probably want to wait till this game's about $50. The deluxe edition is about $50 because I don't think it's worth 80 you know? But I don't think, I could see where somebody could say this game has a 9 or even a 10 because some people might get into it. They might get into the lore. But, you know, that's something that you had to find out for yourself and watch footage of to fully get an idea of what you might be getting into. And he's like getting mad at people because he thinks that uh, these reviewers are trying to lead people astray on purpose. Like, they legitimately like the game. What's your problem, you fucking idiot? Seriously. <laughs> that makes me incredibly frustrated because now you have the entire mainstream internet saying, oh, well, all I did is I went to Metacritic and Metacritic says it's like an 87 out of 100, so it must be game of the year material. Wow, it's the best game ever. I can't wait to play Returnal. I was like, no, wait, did you read the review? Well, no, I just looked at the Metacritic score. I hate that shit. Why does it exist? Why the fuck do, do we do this? DSP just wants to be an influencer so bad and it's ridiculous. Like, he wants people to listen to his opinion, but his opinions suck. Like, I don't understand why he's saying Metacritic doesn't make any sense. Metacritic is probably, like, the most uh, useful review site ever. Like, it takes reviews from a bunch of credible resources. Oh, I'm sorry. A bunch of credible, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Credible journalists, credible websites credible editorials, etc., etc., and they mix them all together and make an average. So, Returnal, the review for it was pretty good. It was like 84 across the board when it first came out, and I think that's enough to warrant people to be like, hmm, that might be pretty good. It's a B, basically. Nobody's going to argue with a B unless you want an A, which, in my opinion, yeah, if you're going to pay like $70, $80, should be an A, you know, at this point. Um, and, you know, there's the reviewers that could just review. They don't even have to have played the game, which is kind of a problem. I wish it was, like, some sort of, like, um, confirmation that you have the game or whatever. But they get on there, and they make their reviews. Um, you could try to trust them, but they're strangers. They, ha they have a reason to hate the game. So, you know, you can take that how you will. Like, I would just probably assume, depending on the game, that most people have good intentions. But some people have bad intentions, you know? You just gotta use your better judgment, like the internet. You can't just fucking believe everything on the internet. You gotta use your better judgment. Why do we... Oh my god, seriously. One of my biggest pet peeves. Biggest pet peeves. Is that. That people just listen to a review score... And that's it. So now, if tomorrow if I play Returnal, and if I criticize the game, I'm wrong. Because Metacritic says 87, man. The game's great. You're just an idiot. Like, no! Actually, no, stupid. Actually, read the fucking reviews, and what you'll see is that the scores don't make sense. I don't know who's saying that to them, but they're completely right for calling him an idiot because, or stupid or whatever, because DSP does not know how to read reviews. He doesn't, he acts like he doesn't do any of this shit. But then you have videos like this every so often where he shits on people. And you know what? I cannot take this personally. And I don't really take it personally. But I did make a review for Returnal. And I listed some things that I thought were kind of negative. I didn't list enough negative things. Probably. But here I am now to tell you that game is still an 8.5 to me. And I still think that you should wait for the game to be lowered in price because of the economy we're in because the day of time we're in you know just fucking save your money maybe get something else or get it later whatever but dsp can't be the fucking all knowing deciding factor on what's good or what point system you use like imagine that i could say several bad things about a game i love you know i could say several bad things about kingdom hearts one i could say I think Sora's character design is really weird. I don't like his outfit. Um, I can say that the spells seem kind of trash at first, most of the game. I can say I don't like the summons that well. I can say I think that his combat with just the Keyblade uh, is kind of lackluster. But that was a game that came out in 2002 and I felt these things a little bit. A little bit, not a lot. 
Um, I can say that right now as an adult and playing Kingdom Hearts 2 and other games that, you know, came after it. And I can still tell you to this day, I love Kingdom Hearts 1. I still like Kingdom Hearts 1. The stories of the Disney characters aren't exactly accurate. I still love Kingdom Hearts 1. Nothing's going to change my opinion on that, you know. Um, I, it's just something that you got to play. But I can list more negative things, but still I like the game. This is what I fucking hate about this shit. It's kind of like, oh my god, collectively the games industry comes together and says, oh look, it's only the second PlayStation 5 exclusive ever. We gotta not true. fucking score up to the high heavens, you know? Because so few people have PS5 and those that have it want a great game, so we gotta say it's good. Even though that we're makes honest, no sense. we criticize the game, 9 out of 10. <clears throat> oh my god. <clears throat> it just, it drives me nuts, okay? He and thinks he's way, cool in that picture. I'm not saying roguelike games are bad. I'm not saying games with repetitive gameplay loops are bad. He's not saying that games with repetitive game loops are bad, but he said that was one of the game destroying factors earlier. Just in this video, by the way. I'm not saying any of that. What I'm saying is I hate the review system that we all use for modern games. It doesn't make sense. Really, it doesn't make sense. Metacritic itself doesn't make fucking sense. Shouldn't exist. Because people just take the number and say it's good instead of actually reading the reviews all right <clears throat> now let's actually talk about what people are saying about returnal okay. all right first of all apparently some of the best graphics people have ever seen on a console video game oh boy we're being told that the particle effects the lighting i wouldn't the, go that far the amount of you know the frames per second the crazy detail on the aliens you're fighting and shit the weapon you know grab everything is apparently like insanely outstanding like top best in class blow your fucking pants off blow your fucking pants off i'm a middle schooler okay that's good also apparently people are really saying that this game is really the, the first game you're playing on playstation 5 that feels like a playstation 5 game what that means is it really feels like the game developers specifically designed this game for the playstation 5 all right and utilized all of its features haptic feedback in the controller right other you games have done that too die you're right back to get right back into the fray <clears throat> demon souls has done that oh my god <laughs> anyway <laughs> this is fucking nickelodeon over here anyway uh so you know demon souls is a game where a lot of people gave it a lot of praise. Demon Souls remake. I gave. I if I could be all in all honesty, I I give that game a seven. You know, um, it's gonna get a lot of praise because the Souls community really loves to jack off in their own mouths. But you know, that's that's whatever. I could see where somebody could give it a ten and not be a fanboy of the Souls of the. I say, I say Soul series. Soul series is Soul Caliber um, of Souls born games. I can see where people would like say that it's a good game, a 10 or a 9. I get that, but that game was like kind of like moving backwards a bit. Um, after building up to like Dark Souls 3 and everything and all the other Souls born games, it just felt like it was lacking some things. And plus, they didn't add any real extra content. Um, and, you know, I, I look at Returnal and it's like, you no, know, Returnal is pretty fresh. It's a fresh idea. And let, hold on, let me go back. All of its Make sure. Haptic feedback. Yeah, it was something about haptic feedback. Uh, so there's a couple games that do that already. Neo Two Rebastard makes takes advantage of that, and so does so does Demon Souls, I believe. And I also believe Miles Morales does as well. Der Destruction All Stars too. Like there's quite a few games that take advantage of these new features. Astro Boy's Playroom, which also is a PlayStation exclusive, by the way. Like, I don't know why he's forgetting that. Maybe because it was free, but whatever. Back in the controller, right? Instant loading time. You die, you're right back to get right back into the fray. Demon <clears throat> Souls is like that. <clears throat> oh, boy. So, that's what I mean. Like, that's gr these are great things, okay? Also, some people are saying, essentially, this game is the roguelike Doom Eternal. Meaning that it has a very challenging gameplay loop. <clears throat> but the gameplay loop can hook you. And if you end up liking the gameplay loop, it ends up being very, very high octane balls. What a stupid fucking meme about Last of Us Part Two we just saw, by the way. 
Like, DSP hated on that game because Ellie was gay. I'm just saying that right now. He won't ever come out and say it. He hated on that game because Ellie was gay. He hated on that game because there was a sex scene in it. This guy who, like, fucking went to a hotel with his 17-year-old girlfriend when he was, like, in his 20s and shit. It, like, he went there and fuck. Well, I don't know if she was 17. She might have been 18, but I don't fucking know. He went to this fucking hotel and joked about watching pornos with her and was showing the collection of porn that was available on the TV to pay per view or whatever. Like, this is the same guy talking about unnecessary sex scenes. Like, Cat has his balls in a jar somewhere and we'll never find him. To the wall fun. Okay? So that's, that's high praise. Doom Eternal, one of the highest reviewed and best praised games of 2020. Saying this game is close to Doom Eternal is actually high praise in my opinion. Even though, personally... I wasn't in love with Doom Eternal and I criticized it heavily. That doesn't mean that I don't acknowledge that tons of people liked the game. And that would mean that this game is pretty fucking good. Okay? Fair enough. Alright. Um. So that's a good thing. Alright? But then we get to the criticisms of the game and or <clears throat> some of the things that I consider worthy of criticism. Oh boy. First of all. Here we go. It's procedurally generated. What does that mean? Procedural uh, is that it's everything generated on the fly. RNG is definitely a factor, meaning it's not pre-designed. These are not set levels. This is not a game where everything... The DSP thinks that procedurally generated means that the computer is making fucking stages up as you go along. <laughs> like, yeah, things are randomized. He has that right, but he makes it seem like... Things are just gonna be like just fucking crazy. Like, oh my god, dude. I can't believe it. They they just generated this room that never existed ever before. Like I explained this earlier, you'll get a feel for what's going to be generated and what isn't. And he doesn't know this because DSP is an idiot. He thinks his Super Nintendo logic or knowledge will carry him into the next fucking century. Was was handcrafted by a game developer. This is a game that the game kind of just throws shit together on its own. So one people, one people, what the fuck? One person, one people's, one person. Oh uh, man, he says nothing here. What ends up happening? This is part is like. That's uh, wait till he says the meme. Throughout the game over and over. Um, <clears throat> it really will feel more. Let me okay. Let me put it this way. Take think about. Dark Souls. Think about Dark Souls. Think Dark Souls. That's a meme with DSP in case you didn't know. So DSP has like this weird obsession with the Soulsborne um, games and he's not very good at any of them. He isn't. He's not very good at any of them. He lets his fans hold his hand through the game. Like if he didn't have fans to support him throughout the, the playthroughs of the games, he wouldn't get through them ever. Like I hate when he brings them up. I hate when people bring up Soulsborne games in general because none of them are that hard, in my opinion. None of them are. You just have to grind more than you do in other games. This, I call that a disproportionate difficulty or maybe an artificial difficulty. Like, when you play Mega Man X4, for example, you have to be hit several times. Like, the enemy can't just kill you in three hits. They have to hit you like probably fucking like eight or ten times before they can kill you, right? And they give you invulnerability. So that I think is like a good like difficulty, right? So it gives you plenty of breathing room to get hit. Dark Souls is not like that at first. It is not a difficult fucking game. It's just they start you off with shit that gets you killed easy and you can't kill as easy as the things that kill you. So you think it's difficult, but when you get shit that's at the right level that you needed to be to kill shit, shit will die instantly. And you can take like five or six hits, depending on what you're wearing, right? But DSP, he's obsessed with Dark Souls because he thinks that game is like the pinnacle of difficulty and he's conquered it. And, you know, since it's considered a difficult game, he can reference it to anything. And that's what a lot of uh, Soulsborne fans think, and it, it's irritating. Dark Souls 3, all right? Oh, actually, actually, I got a better example. Here we go. Bloodborne. Think about <laughs> playing the main campaign of Bloodborne. 
how well designed it is, how great handcrafted it is, right? Okay. Bloodborne is outstanding. It's not wrong. Now I like Bloodborne. Up chalice dungeons, right? The procedurally generated chalice. So we talked about this earlier. That are boring and repetitive and the same. They are boring and repetitive because they are not great set pieces. They are not. They don't have any great scenery. They have a couple of interesting bosses, but that's about it. And some interesting enemies, but you don't see them that often. That is what I had to say about Bloodborne's Chalice Dungeons and how some of them are procedurally generated. Some of them are, not all of them are. I forgot to mention that earlier, but he's making a big thing about it, and I think that he is. I don't know. He he's using his past Bloodborne experience to like try and dictate how Returnal is going to be, and he's wrong. Same fucking thing, over and over and over, and to the point where they're they're just really a grind. And you know what? Bloodborne's Chalice Dungeons wouldn't be boring if the gameplay was a bit more interesting. Think about that. I like Bloodborne. I spent hundreds of hours on Bloodborne. Like, people think I hate Soulsborne games. I like Bloodborne. I like Dark Souls 3 for a certain amount of time. And I think Demon Souls is okay. Bloodborne is the best out of all of them to me. Uh, fuck Sekiro. I don't care about Sekiro. Um, Bloodborne. I'm focused on Bloodborne right now. If that game, in which, in my opinion, Bloodborne's an 8.5, if they made its gameplay more interesting than what it was, the Chalice Dungeons wouldn't be so bad. The procedurally generated ones or otherwise. I could do shit like that in Devil May Cry. Bloody Palace is literally a fucking circle in Devil May Cry. But guess what? I can play Bloody, Bloody Palace a lot because Bloody Palace throws enemies at me and I can enjoy the combat. In Bloodborne, you can't do that as much because you can only do so much with R1, 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 and hold R2. ...and not very entertaining, right? Both for the viewer and the player. <clears throat> do you see? That's the difference. Handcrafted, specifically designed to have a challenge in mind, to have a, 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 a an a atmosphere in mind, a story that plays out, you know, well-designed bosses and things versus, oh, just randomly generated. And it's repetitive and ends up being grindy and boring. You see? Um, and that's what kind of makes me a little bit worried. Seriously. That's what makes me worried about Returnal. I, I honestly feel that... I never noticed this, but isn't it nice that DSP has this as like his fucking um, slideshow for his Twitch? Some b blonde hair, blue eye, white guy punching some black dude in front of a bunch of other white people. Would have, would I know it's from Street Fighter, but still. And if the game designers had personally developed every stage, I was when I when I first heard about this game, I was like, dude, this game could be like it's like Dead Space on steroids. Imagine if it was like a survival horror game where you're fighting tons of crazy aliens and shit, and you know what I mean, and there's scares and everything. Instead, it just seems like it's gonna be run into an, an area. Oh, there's enemies, kill them. Uh oh, more enemies, kill them. Okay, you use it, kill them. Get around, survive, dodge, kill them, kill them, kill. Them. And when you think about this... Isn't that... Do you not do that in Metroid? It's like gameplay, gameplay, gameplay. There's no atmosphere. There's no... Do you know what I mean? Do you not do that in fucking Dark Souls? Like, I'm talking about Metroid. What the fuck? You lose... You definitely lose something. Now, in addition to that... Alright, in addition to that... Apparently, the game has no save system. When you go into a stage... You're going into that stage and you gotta beat that shit all at once. Some stages, and this is actually one of the major criticisms I saw from multiple gaming outlets this morning when I was reading these reviews. A lot of them are saying the the levels are too long. The levels definitely feel like they are way too long. They slog on. You're like, when the f They slog on if you're scared that you're gonna die. The fuck does this end? Because you know you can't save. <clears throat> so you're gonna have times when you're gonna be incredibly frustrated play for an hour, die, now you have to play for a fucking hour again. Which is the same for Hades or any game. Like, since he wanted to use Soulsborne games, like, you ever been played a Soulsborne game that doesn't have, like, a good, like, checkpoint system? Like, you know, the, let's say the, the, the fucking shrines are too far apart. Like, you know, this is not unfamiliar territory. As a matter of fact, it's territory that you care, like, you're fine with. So what the fuck is the problem? What? I want you to think about that. 
modern day gaming, modern day, 2021, the game developer doesn't actually care about my time. Rogue like game. Oh, something new that I didn't expect. Easy to Probably get from hours. stage to stage. What? <clears throat> Why? Why are you doing this to me? Why are you wasting my fucking time? Give me a save point. No. No save points in Returnal. Why? <laughs> Can you give me one valid explanation or justification why you're doing it that way all you're doing is creating frustration for a fucking gamer i'm sorry that my time is valuable and i don't want to play for an hour die after what are you going to fucking do game. man what do you mean your time is valuable you don't do anything but play video I, games I, I you need to go shopping half the time single modernized justification of why that is except oh we just wanted to make the game more frustrating for the gamer <clears throat> So that's another major thing that obviously has got me really worried about the game. Okay, um, essentially, my concern is thus: I'm gonna play seventy dollars for this game. I'm gonna play two sessions of it, and they're gonna be great. The first session's gonna blow my socks off. Amazing graphics, cool enemies. Oh my god! Play that's fun and everything. You know, and get you know, advanced. His predictions. Rest. Great. Second session, okay, getting a little bit tougher, still kind of fun. But then when you get to the third session, the fourth session. I don't right, care. Hold on a second. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to do this as best I can. All right. There we go, dumb last of us meme. So here's here's what I'm thinking. All right. Hold on a second. I'm actually gonna turn off the webcam for this. I want to give you, I want to give you a perfect example of two different scenarios of when you're playing a, a video game. Okay. Scenario one. Wow, I just beat that game. So DSP is so condescending right now. He thinks that nobody in the audience or anybody that's ever watched him has played video games. And that game blew me away. That game's gonna have me thinking for a while. And that game was so good that I can't wait to do a new game plus run and jump right back into it and see maybe the things that I missed the first run through. This okay. is an exceptionally good game, and I can't wait to play it again. Okay. okay. That's scenario one. That's here's scenario two. Oh my god. That's how he plays the game. Thank god I finally beat that fucking game. That game was a chore. That game was balls to the wall. Insanely annoying. I don't think anybody who plays games that they like actually have this fucking, um, this reaction. I've never played a game to finish and, well, maybe near Automata. And I was like, man, that wasn't worth it. You know, there's a difference in being disappointed in the game. And, like, everything that's happened in it, like, you know, Final Fantasy XV or Nier Automata, in my opinion. And just being like, man, nothing about that was that interesting. And, you know, just not liking it. But him, it's like, oh, man, it's this chore. Thank God I don't have to. I got this under my belt, as he's going to say. Oh, man, I don't have to deal with that again. Like, yo, I've never felt that way. Like, even when I haven't been enjoying a game, I had some optimism for it. And I just, you know, stopped at the end or just you know didn't like it and i could just part ways with it and just not like it but him it's like a fucking chore because he has to do it he feels like he has to do it and challenging and i'm just happy that it's fucking over with i never want to fucking play that game again but at least i can say i beat it and i have that accomplishment under my belt do you see the difference those are two completely different gameplay experiences they both can be valid they both can be say okay those are both good games but for me, especially because we're so early on in the life cycle of the PlayStation 5, I would much more like to have the game that wants me to pick this controller back up and play the game again than a game where I'm so frustrated at it that I finally beat it that I slam my controller down and say I never want to touch it ever. You have fucking went through Dark Souls 1, 2, and 3, lost multiple times, expressed your disdain for the games, played them multiple times, and literally have had the same feeling that you're saying. And you got paid to fucking do it again. And you never even beat Bloodborne's DLC, you fucking pig. Like, you're an a DSP is such an asshole. Like, he doesn't even realize how much of a hypocrite he is. Again, thank God it's over. Do you see the difference? $70. I don't, because they'll fucking pay you to play again. Give me the game that's going to hook me and want me to play it again and say, wow, that game resonates with me forever rather than the game that I'm glad is done with. That's what I'm worried about with Returnal, honestly. I'm worried that this is going to be a game that after two, three streams, I'm frustrated and bored, you're frustrated and bored, 
and why are we even playing it anymore when we've got Resident Evil 8, when we've got chill game like Pokemon Snap, when I'm trying to get my, my second uh. year replicate in, why are we playing it? You see? That's because you want to make money off about. new IPs, now, I DSP. Because I haven't played it yet. I'm just judging. These are my You're questions. judging it before it came out because you don't trust some reviews. Okay. So Why'd you look I at the reviews? Know. I honestly don't know how this is gonna go. I'm 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 looking forward to oh it my God. from just a curiosity standpoint, but I honestly don't know Let's what see this section. Up. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> I wanted to vent a little bit about it this morning. And here's the thing, it could be a great game. I don't know. I might love it. I might play it tomorrow and be like, oh my god, this is great. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know. We're going to find out. We're going to play it tomorrow for the first time and we're going to see firsthand. That is... That is one of the best benefits of being a content creator. Is that I get to experiment and share these, these experiences with you guys every day. Okay? <clears throat> we're going to find out tomorrow. I hope you guys will be here tomorrow for this. I wasn't there. Spoiler alert. It's a waste of a rant. There's never a waste of a rant. How dare you say that, Magma? It was a, race, a waste of a rant. A rant. What was no, the point? If anything, this rant is valid because I'm tired of the fucking mainstream game review sites that suck shit. Like, I couldn't believe that. I'm reading the review and it says the, oh ga the, the gameplay loops are too long because there's no saving. It's incredibly frustrating when you die. Uh, the <laughs> gameplay loops get boring after like five hours. You start to do the same thing over and over. And therefore, it's not as good as it looks at first glance. Although the first few hours are quite good, nine out of ten. Oh my 10. god! What? Nine? What? What the fuck? Your review just said five out of ten, four out of ten. You gave it a nine out of ten. What's this guy talking about? Oh my god, man! <laughs> After taxes, this is. because in Europe the game costs eighty euros. Oh my god! The equivalent of ninety-seven American dollars. That's what a fucking like, cheapskate for somebody who makes as much money as he makes. Look at that. Tip's goal, $104. He made enough to fucking buy the game and enough to pay some bills. Why? Because the reviews. If every review says 9 out of 10, it doesn't matter. It's going to sell. Especially because there are so few PS5 exclusives, people are going to fucking buy it, dude. Okay. Because there's so few PS5 exclusives. Like, what if... You know, he said that not a lot of people had PS5s, and that's true, but it still sold millions. You know that, right? <laughs> like, so millions of people will have the chance to play the game, so I don't know. People seriously greatly underestimate the, the power of mainstream game reviews. Whatever. Like Divinity 2, because they don't hold your hand. Divinity 2 is... It, don't hold your hand. Divinity 2, it's not even a matter of challenge. It's a matter of, like, needing to know what you can and can't do in what order because you're either under or under leveled or whatever. It's not like I'm playing Divinity 2 and oh my god, every piece of combat's destroying me. That's not the case at all. The case is you walk into an area, oh, everything's 15 levels above you. Oh, you got crushed and turned into paste, right? That's the problem with Divinity 2 is there's no the game doesn't tell you where to go. The game doesn't tell you where the, what, what direction to go in. It just throws you to the wolves and you end up wasting hours of time. That's different than a game that you're describing where the, uh, not much combat challenge essentially what not even close um so i say that's a terrible comparison a better comparison would be do i think that games like assassin's creed valhalla and, and immortals which weren't super challenging in the combat department essentially made me no, i don't care Jimmy about that shit dollar 30 says you need to stop quantifying a game score in terms of math you can't just say a game deserves a low score because it has flaws flaw doesn't mean bad well here's the here thing, we go all right when you are a responsible games journalist or someone who realizes that they have a DSP has never been a responsible game journalist even when he was trying to make his quote professionals unquote reviews I'm sorry quote professional reviews unquote voice that people listen to you have to have something that's called personal responsibility all right when you're reviewing a game you have some objective responsibility objective responsibility objective responsibility what you like and don't like about a game and then to weigh and balance it properly yes subjectiveness comes into play in a game review it's an opinion okay yeah so with that being said shut the fuck up so basically he's like you got to weigh and balance okay so what if i say the graphics don't look good 
the game has bad stages, but the gameplay is fucking awesome, right? And then I say, well, another thing, the character design isn't that great, but the gameplay is fucking awesome, right? It's some of the best gameplay I've ever played. So in his mind, what I just said was, it was three bad things that destroy the game, but because the gameplay is good, I should give it like a, a score of like fucking what? Two out of five stars or some shit? I don't know. Like, what a weird way to quantify things. And that's what that person is saying to him. Stop trying to quantify shit in your wheel, your fucking weird balance scale. But at the very same time, if you're going to tell me the game has ten things wrong with it and two things good, how can you say it's a nearly perfect game? That is factually incorrect. That's called, oh, my feels took me over. And my oh, feels man. say that this game is so good. It's bullshit. It's right, so if you feel like a game is really good, then yeah, I think your feelings should take over so you can tell people, I feel like I really love this game, or I feel like I really like this game. What a stupid fucking point he's trying to make here. Uh, their, their feelings took over, like, okay, so what is my head supposed to fucking tell me? Like, oh man, I don't like this, this, X, Y, or Z about the game, but I do like the, these two things. So, you know, I'm going to say the game is majority of it is just bad. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever, man. And he keeps going on this fucking tangent about that. Like, dude, if they say, they didn't even say 10 things were wrong about the fucking game. They just said there's like three or four things they don't like. But, you know, you can still give a game a nine for that if you enjoy the combat enough. All right, I'm sorry, the gameplay doesn't necessarily even need to be combat. It's called bullshit. It's called you're immature. It's called you have no fucking self-control. And you let your emotions overcome you instead of being an objective reviewer. And I'm not going to have it. Why shouldn't joy be a part of your emotions when you're reviewing a game? I'm not going to let these fuckers get away with it in 2021. They've always been doing this. Oh, well, they... DSP, you don't have a fucking choice but to let people get away with it, man. You're a nobody on the scale of anyone else. Can you just a review so I can put any number on it I want? How about go fuck yourself? And I'm a nobody. You probably say that about my shit, but guess what? If you say it about my shit, I'm gonna come after you even more. How about I don't care about your review then because you're a fucking incredibly irresponsible person. Because people will buy games. Based DSP on has not reviewed a game in like fucking so five or six years. Be reasonable. Or how about this? Don't do a number score. Don't do it at all. No number score. Instead, just give a text review. That explains the good things and bad things about the game and let people judge for themselves. Again, man, why the fuck is he so reliant on the numbers and how the fuck is he? So if I have a scale of 1 to 10 and I give you four negative things, why is it necessarily, why is it necessary in your mind that each one of those things is one point? It's not all one point. The shit possibly that I've named off could be fucking point two points. They're minor details that I think should be talked about. You know? Period. There are things that I might mention to you. To you, they might be different. But to me, on my scale, the game equals 8.5. I don't think that the game should cost as much as it does. That's not a complete fucking point. That's something that's subjective depending on what you um what kind of money you make. You know? I don't think that they should have the DLC or the Deluxe Edition have the two weapons on there that are really fucking cool. And I think you should have two spacesuits. And also, the game is like 13 hours long. I don't think it should be 80 or $70. It's still 8.5 experience. I would tell anybody with a PS5, play Returnal. i tell them to play that before Demon Souls because Returnal is more entertaining in my eyes. Instead of just putting a number on it, everyone's a lazy fuck and just thinks that the game is great or bad. Hmm? Jimmy Hall took me another dollar 30 since you say you don't like roguelike games. I never said that. In fact, I've You basically said that. I played Binding of Isaac. I thought the game was good, but. I never seen him play that. incredibly repetitive. It's still good, though. Outside of that, I mean. What other but you said that was a game destroying play? fucking trait. Not many. What was that one I played? Was it Resistor or something? Trans what? Well, maybe here's my criticism. Okay, here's my criticism. Returnal shouldn't be a roguelike game. 
Returnal is only the second PlayStation 5 exclusive game. This is a dumb a fucking point. I can't make crafting. any sense of. It should of. be a game that has atmosphere. It should be a game that resonates Why? with you. Not Why? That crushes you into fucking paste, wastes your time with no save. Why? Why does it have to not be a roguelike game? What the fuck kind of stupid... That's a dumb fucking opinion if I ever heard one, man. Like, it shouldn't be a roguelike game. It shouldn't be a genre that people enjoy. It shouldn't be a genre to try and popularize uh, the genre, right? You know, that's like me saying there shouldn't be any fighting games to be made in 2021 and people should just focus on other shit. It's a stupid fucking thing to say and it's baseless. It's just something he's saying because he's running off impulses right now. It pisses you off. It should be a game that actually resonates with you and say, wow, I'm glad I bought a PS5, not, wow, I'm glad that game's fucking over. That's the point I'm making. No, it's not. You're mad at the reviews and you're mad That's people have more influence than you and they may or may not watch your stream depending on it. I don't know. Super Giant made Nothing. 80s. See that? Look at that. So I played Bastion and I played Transistor, and those were the the, the predecessors to Hades. Shirtless Shut Mofo up. tipped me a dollar thirty. Another di another dollar tip. Thank you, Shirtless Mofo. Let's get that on the leaderboard. And he says, I feel like Returnal is meant to be a test run. If players lap it up, then they may make more games this way. Procedural generation, I believe it's going to be more attractive for companies going forward because current gen demands a lot of resources and time. Yeah. What? I almost I almost feel. I almost feel. Look at those fucking PNGs like, he couldn't figure out. This game was because this game was not a triple A company. They're not. They didn't have the resources of a major triple A studio. And so they said the only way we're gonna pull this sucker off is if we do procedurally generate it. If we try to handcraft every little piece of it, we don't have the time or resources to do it. But if we just let the engine do what? it for us, right? This is such a stupid point. Remember how I said he thinks that the fucking engine creates this shit on its own? Like, they're actually making brand new things each and every time? That's exactly what he's confirming right there. He thinks that the engine is making the fucking game itself and then put any sort of effort into it. And it was made within like a fucking year. And, you know, that's just the easiest thing to do. Like, no, I would argue making it so some fucking areas connect to each other that don't like really connect to each other is a little bit more interesting because they had to keep changing the map there's different things that connect together you gotta make sure that there's bug testing for that so shit doesn't fuck up like i would assume right but when you just make something that connects together period it's like okay that's less interesting like imagine if returnal is just like a straight shot game and it was a certain amount of rooms like it was like i don't know any other type of game where the maps are just solid. They're just generated and they're there. It would not be as interesting. I promise you it wouldn't. Then we could get away with it. That's kind of how I feel. Because I don't know what else that... Why else would they have... I don't get it. I just don't get it. You don't get a lot of things, DSP. I don't get why this would have been this... You know, again, we're going to show off everything this console can do. Make a game that's, that's basically a grind. Why? Okay, so I bet you are waiting for Elden Ring information, aren't you, you fucking pig? Why? Think of all the games that have resonated oh. in the last five years. Here are the games that have resonated for me. You know, games like Ghost of Tsushima. Okay. Um, God of War. Okay. You know? You know, I'll be honest, a game like this. So basically, third-person story-driven games. Gotcha. That's what you wanted it to be? Detroit Become Human. The story of that game was outstanding. Uh, um, it was pretty I'm cool. I'm trying to think of, like, the best resonating game. You know, these are games that I'm going to remember for a very long AAA time. AAA titles I mean, those were just a repetitive with story. My balls and made me get pissed off, exactly. Hmm. It would have been Last of Us 2 if Ellie wasn't Zero. gay and there wasn't a sex scene with Abby. <laughs> Zero. But everyone has different tastes. And that's the thing. Oh, my God. I, I now he wants to do the everyone has different feel. taste thing. Uh, Snow Carl took me a dollar thirty and said the issue is that normal people have no interest in reading five page essays from nerds on Kotaku about some indie game. <laughs> we want a quick quantitative stack. Kotaku's we'll trash, kind of. See, and I'm okay with that if they know how to do it and they did it they did it reasonably, but they don't or at least some people that make I'm the making, articles are. The point I'm making is if they were responsible, if they had talent, if they had any kind of credibility, 
they'd be able to give it a number that made sense. But then er this game, every game should not be nine out of ten. You know, it just they can't do that. They've proven time and time again they are not capable of of being responsible and mature. They just pump out the feels. Oh, the game gave me the feels. Nine out of ten. DSP just makes up a bunch of bullshit, man. Like, I know I mentioned the feels thing earlier, but it's so stupid. Like, what are you talking about? Why can't people feel good about playing games? Like, why do they gotta be like you? They gotta do it for a fucking job and give you the fucking, ah, uh, well, this game in my head, I don't like this part, and it fucking permanently scars my playthrough. So, I, I, it's bad. That's point one. That's negative. So, it's a nine so far. And there's point two, so it's another nine. All right, I'm sorry. It's another. It's a fucking eight. Jimmy Hall, Timmy Dollar Thirty says your version of a good, credible, responsible game score seems to be start with a perfect score and subtract X amount for each flaw the game has, regardless of how good the game actually is. Um, no. Yeah, it is. It's, it's exactly not, that. It's exactly that's that. Not correct at all. Mm -hmm. No. Yep. What was the segment my, called? My, I think my, Jimmy, you don't know how. I'm trying count. to make Jimmy. All right, I hope that this 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 makes sense. Modern game reviewers, game journalists, mm. per se, tend to oh monstrously overinflate scores for games that have hype behind them. Like what? It's that simple. Like what? They will criticize. Last of Us Part Two, the game you fucking hate because you're a conservative Republican bitch. It, it always has a crazy high score. Always. Very few exceptions. Very few exceptions where you'll find a game journalist being realistic. And then when they finally are, it's almost not fair. All right? Mm -hmm. So I'll give you some perspective here. Last year, so many games journalists completely overinflated certain game scores. I'm not going to say which the game. Yeah. In particular, I feel the game score was overinflated. Oh. Yeah, and because it was The Last of Us Part 2, because he's a fucking bitch and, and he's a coward. That's why. He's tired of fucking saying it because he knows the reasoning for the for why he hates The Last of Us, the, the last of us Part 2 is dumb as fuck like yo two parts of that game that happened he didn't like and he literally went through fucking at least that game is like fucking more than like 15 hours to get through he went through like 15 hours thinking about nothing but those two scenes and he was done with it like he was done with it as soon as the fucking shit started right and he was one of those dudes that was swayed by those reviews DSB, I had no problem with gay people. As soon as there's a sex scene with two fucking 17 or 18 year olds, you know. No, nah, they're like 18. Two 18 year old women, he fucking lost it. Uh, why are they smoking weed? Go to his fucking video. Why are they smoking weed? It's dangerous outside. He hates fucking drugs, even though he pretended like he used to fucking smoke weed in college. DSB is a fucking liar, man. Oh, perhaps there's a slide in this pre stream slideshow that may even explain what I mean. But I think you understand what I'm saying, okay? Then, a game like... Really? Like, like, that's how big of a bitch he is about it. He hates that Last of Us Part Two is actually loved by people, and it got review bombed, and he fucking chose the wrong side of it. Hey, look, by the way, if you're listening right now, if you really hate Last of Us Part Two, shut the fuck up, man. What are you talking about? It's literally the same as Last of Us Part One, gameplay-wise. The story isn't that fucking bad. It's better than Part One. There's more fucking character development. Shut the fuck up. Get over yourself. You know? Like, nobody wants to hear it. And it's a 60 FPS on PS5. Suck my dick. You know? <laughs> Period. I don't care what DSP says, man. He's, he's just a fucking moron. Ghost of Tsushima comes out. And I actually feel... He can't even say it right. It's Tsushima. The actual reviews for Ghost of Tsushima were actually Tsushima. really good. Like, if you... Yeah, I, I, of course you would fucking say that because it was your offset for saying Last of Us Part Two was bad. So he thought one game got overinflated with good reviews, and that was it basically. That's that's his um, reasoning for why the gaming industry is overinflated by um, good reviews for games that he thinks are bad because of one game last year he didn't like. Because again, I have to emphasize this because there was two girls who had sex with each other and smoke weed one girl was fucking a guy and she's muscular and that's basically it two fucking instances two scenes fucked them up for over 15 hours who would you trust with the review somebody who's played a whole game and took the whole thing in stride and took everything in about the game 
or DSP who literally fucking can't stand two things in a more than 15 to 20 hour experience and it just he just shits all over the game. Who are you going to trust with the review? If you read those reviews, they are pretty accurate to what the game is. The problem is, because they overinflated the scores of other games that year, they basically said Ghost of Tsushima is like no good compared to those games, which is com that nobody said that. Nobody said that DSP fabricated that shit. There was several good games as good as Ghost of Tsushima, if not better, or maybe a little bit worse. At least for PlayStation side, I don't know much about the other ones. I'm not going to pretend that I know, but there was Final Fantasy VII Remake. There was Neo 2, which is another game that I reviewed. And there was also, um, shit, why am I forgetting it? Besides Ghost of Tsushima. Oh, Last of Us Part 2. I think Last of Us Part 2 is a good game. Is it fucking a 10? I'd probably give Last of Us Part 2 an 8 or an 8.5. Like, there's some things I don't like about the game that are just gameplay. You know? But I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that the story was bad. The story was fucking fun. Complete horseshit. 100% bullshit. Ghost of Tsushima hands down was one of the best games of 2020. There's okay. No way you could even objectively say it wasn't. If you look on paper at the content of games and things like that, you have to admit, even if you didn't like it, it still was one of the best games of 2020. Okay. So why is it on the lower end of the review spectrum for those games? Who said this shit? In the reviews of other games. And this is the point I'm making. These games get overhyped. The fuck... I'm going to be clean with you about uh, Ghost of Tsushima. Ghost of Tsushima is a great game. I would go as far as to say it's one of the best games I ever played, personally. But I still think Neo 2 was more fun than Ghost of Tsushima. Now, the story and narrative behind Ghost of Tsushima, it was pretty good. I still think Last of Us Part 2 had a more interesting story. But in 2020, my game of the year probably was Neo 2. Like, I love Final Fantasy VII Remake. I do. And it's close, but Neo 2 just gave me something that I needed. It got me through the pandemic, you know? But Last of Us, to me, had the best story. Ghost of Tsushima gave me the best feeling when playing the story. But, you know, I there's plenty of things I can say about Ghost of Tsushima, you know? And they're all great. Or most of them are great. But there are some things where it's like, eh, they could have did this better in the get-go. Like not having New Game Plus at first. You know, I had to wait till I got tired of the game to get New Game Plus. But we ain't gonna talk about that right now. Fucking reviews get overinflated, and then everything else suffers. <clears throat> and that's not right. You have a game where the gameplay is flawed, but the story is one of the best stories you've ever experienced in a video game. Then you can say, listen, even though you gotta put up with the flaws of the game, it's worth it to get through this game because it is so fulfilling when you beat it, and it's better than the sum of its flaws. Then I can understand them saying, okay, Oh my god, shut the, the fuck hour, up. It was apparent from reading their fucking reviews, they never got to the good parts of the game because they gave up. You see what I'm saying? Snowcrawl tipped me a dollar thirty and says, Isn't boosting an objectively low rating by subjective standards exactly what you did with Bug Snacks? No offense, it was a pretty average game for children. It was. Um, well, well, I didn't play Bug Snacks, so let me just clarify that. I didn't play that game, but it does not look like a game or reference to anybody. This guy played Bug Snacks, and he acted like that game was the shit. Like, I, I seen him play a little bit of it. He acted like that game was pretty dope, right? He looks at Last of Us 2 like it's a piece of shit. He played Bug Snacks like Bug Snacks was like the fucking... Like, it was something that he wants to play with his fucking girlfriend. Or, I'm sorry, his wife. Oh, did you not hear what I just said? I said, if you were playing a game, and you feel that, despite its, shortcom its shortcomings and its flaws, that the game has uniqueness to it, or the game has a factor to it, that overcomes its flaws, then you can say that it's a better game than its flaws. And that's what I feel Bug Snacks is. So he has the feels then, right? Because he was just talking about feels. DSP is such a fucking fraud. What is this part? Hey, say tip me a dollar thirty. So I know you just made this statement with Ghost of Tsushima and Last of Us too, but you can't say that a game's objectively good or bad review is someone's opinion. A game that you like another. Okay, thanks. Just like I said, he said he said absolutely nothing. Right. So you know he tipped them. People need to stop doing that with DSP. I would like. Can you charge him back for that? Like, don't mock what I said to you, you piece of shit. Like, 
I'm literally just disagreeing because you have shown that you think in weird fucking ways when it's not going with your narrative. Like, he has a lot of mental... His fucking mental Olympics is ridiculous. Mental gymnastics, whatever you want to call it. I'm done with this video, man. Like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and upload this motherfucker in 720p and be done with it. Fuck DSP, he's a moron. Returnal, 8.5 out of 10.